numeric term. So everywhere you see A, B, and C, those are just regular old numbers. You've got an X squared term, an X term, a constant. That means it doesn't have a variable. And it's equal to zero. That's the important part. Okay. So when you get ready to do an equation like this one, and it's not factor, you want to make sure that your equation is in standard form first. So I always check to make sure it's in standard form first. And by that, I mean, is everything in order, like x squared, x constant, and is it equal to zero? And if it is, it's time to factor it, okay? And it is, right? It just looks right. It looks like it's supposed to look. So we can go ahead and factor this like we did yesterday. So bring down that equal zero. So we're doing the same thing. Well, it multiplies to give you 18, uh-huh, but adds to give you three. Okay, so we already know the factors are six and three. How are we gonna make the signs work? Make it Yes, we need a positive 6 and a minus 3. So double check that when you get it factored. Then if you're satisfied with that, you want to go ahead and set each factor equal to 0 and you're done. So two little baby equations. So x to negative 6 on that one. And then a positive 3 on this one. I'm going to draw those little braces here. Okay, so notice that both times we did these, we got two solutions. The reason is because we don't just have an x equals equation just one time. We got two of those. So if you've got a, an equation with a square in it, you're going to get two answers, at most two answers every time. All right? Okay, so let's do one that's not in standard form. Can y'all see that over there? Yeah? No? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can see it or not. Okay, so x squared plus 2x equals, oh my bad, minus 7 equals negative 4. Y'all won't be messing these up because it'll be hard to read. Okay. If you're given an equation like this, is it in standard form? It is not, all right? And the reason it's not is because it's not equal to zero. So you want to make it equal to zero. So how do we do that? What do we need to move? This thing right here is not where it's supposed to be. It needs to come over here. So if you want to move negative four over here, how do you do that? Add it. Yes. You got to add it to whatever I can add it to. And the only thing I can add it to is seven. So this is gone. And now I've got a zero. Leave it in order, x squared plus 2x, and that's going to be a minus 3. And then you can factor that, and you can solve it. Y'all was right. You know you need the same setup every time. You need x and x. Let's see. Only one choice for factors of three, isn't there? Three and one, one and three. We just want a negative three when we multiply, but then a positive two when we add those numbers together. So, yes, you want positive on the threes. When you subtract them, you want the answer to be positive. So the larger number needs the positive sign. All right, so then you got to set those equal to zero. And I know that once you get to this point, you're like, oh my gosh, I know it's going to happen. I'm just going to minus 3 and get negative 3. I'm okay with you making that leap, okay? I know it's just changing the sign on it. I know that. It's fine. You don't have to write that little bitty baby step if you're okay with that. So then this would be negative 3 and 1. How are y'all doing so far? Feeling okay? All right. We want to erase this one. I think I might need one more. And I'm going to stop and then let y'all just start diving in, okay? So on this one, what time we leave anyway? 11.46. In this fourth period? Yes. Mm -hmm. God, I don't even know what date it is hardly, much less what time it is. <laughs> All right, let's see. Mm. I want you to pick four or five. Four. 
Oh, okay, I got you. Thank you. You mean the one that's got a number like 9x squared? Yeah. <laughs> that's number five. Okay, we'll do that one then. It's the hardest one on here. Yeah, and it's also the hardest one on the other page. Yes, it is. But guess what? You already know how to do it. You just need me to remind you. Are y'all ready? Here it is. It looks gross. It looks nasty. But we're going to do it. Looks real disgusting. Y'all ready? All right, here we go. You always need to get, I'm waiting on y'all. I'm not going to, you're not going to talk while I'm talking about how it goes. All right. We need to get everything on one side of the equal sign and on the other side it needs to be a zero. Okay, I normally, depending on how it's set up, but I usually will move things to the left. But if that doesn't work, then I'll move it to the other side. Now, how do I know I want to move it this way? Well, here's what I can see. That there's an 8x squared over here, and if I move it over here, I'm going to minus 8x squared, and that's going to be a positive 1x squared. So I want to make x squared positive because if it's negative, then it just looks gross, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to move everything to the left hand side. It doesn't always go that way, but most of the time it will. Okay, so here we go. We're going to subtract eight x squared from this nine x squared. So we got one x squared, which is what we want. And you don't even have to write one; you can just write x squared. Okay, now are you okay with kind of killing a couple birds with one stone here? All right, so we don't have to write this thing out five, five steps long. All right, so let's also move this x over here. So we move the 8x squared. Let's move x. So if I minus x from this side, you got to minus it from the like term on this side, which is 5. Yeah. So negative 5x minus 1x. So it's like I'm just kind of stacking this on top of each other. So that will be what? Actually, it's negative six. Yeah, because they're both negative. That's okay. All right, so that's gone and that's gone, right? And then plus seven. This little rogue seven over here, does it have anything to combine with? No. So we're just going to stick it over there, right? We're going to subtract seven, subtract seven somewhere over here, okay? So it's just going to be a negative seven when you move it over. Now, we kind of did like three things at once, but that's okay. You can do that, all right? You're just moving stuff on the other side of the equal sign, combining like terms is all you're doing. But if you wanted to write it out every time, it would be okay. That way you know you got it right every single time. Now you go and factor and set them equal to zero. Oh, I like this one. Seven and one are my only choices. But be careful because you want a negative when you multiply and negative when you add. That's right. The larger number's got to be negative because when we add them, we want a negative answer. So there you go. Set those equal to zero. And I, again, I'm okay with you just making this leap, saying I know I'm going to add seven, and I know I'm going to subtract one, and just going straight to that step. That's totally okay at this stage of the game, because y'all not out for one, you know what you're doing on that part. Okay, so big thing to remember is get it in standard form, make it equal to zero, then factor it, then solve it. So it's really just a little bit more than what you did yesterday, isn't it? Just a little bit. All right, I'm going to... Stop this recording. I hope that helped y'all. If you need anything, let me know, okay?